So at the Center for the Study of Asian American Health, I've been involved with the Vietnamese Community Health Initiative. Over the past few years, we've been conducting a community health needs assessment focused a lot in the South Bronx where a number of Vietnamese and Cambodians have resettled since the, uh, the war in Vietnam ended and since the killing fields in Cambodia. And right now, we're trying to move beyond that to look at the actual types of services that are needed in the community and how best to provide that type of care. The mental health needs are, are varied for Southeast Asians, particularly for the Vietnamese. You, you have people who've endured these traumas of having the war around them. You have older adults, older men particularly, who are veterans of the war, um, had either fought on the front lines, had been shot at, have been interned in these re-education camps from anywhere from six months to a year, three years, five years. Um, and the unimaginable horrors that they've been through, um, these things don't leave you very easily in life. And yet these refugees, these survivors, have tried to make a new life for themselves in the U.S. while they're trying to keep their mental health problems, the things such as post-traumatic stress disorder or depression or anxiety, kind of under wraps. But over time, it's harder and harder to live your life and not worry about these things. When folks have come to seek services, seek care, oftentimes they're very frustrated, they're very confused because they don't really know what else to do and they don't necessarily have the language, the words, so to speak, to talk about these mental health problems. Um, we in the academia setting and in the professional settings have all these nice words to describe them and to talk amongst ourselves, but especially in a refugee community, especially working with Vietnamese and Cambodians, the language just isn't there. So working with a group that has been traumatized and is disadvantaged in so many ways can be very challenging, and I think the partnership is really useful in um, working towards a common goal. And so there's folks who are academics, and there are folks who are public health specialists, and there are community-based organizers. And we're all working towards the same goal of improving the health of the community. And that, I think, is a great way of overcoming some of the barriers and some of the, the challenges that, um, that might traditionally be present in working with um, a very disadvantaged and potentially disenfranchised population. To have a successful academic and community partnership, I, we've been trying to use community-based participatory research methods, which really means, in essence, that we are going in with a community member one-on-one, -on -one, and that we're trying to break down those barriers that have traditionally held people back from engaging with us. Um, and so we're trying to provide the agencies with something that they need while we're still also conducting research. One of the things moving forward um, with the center and with our community partners is we're trying to really identify programs that would work and something that the community can have and work on and really use and apply and help out the members.